Something that always um, fascinated me about Link ever since I played the first Zelda game, I forget what the first one I played was, I think it was Ocarina of Time. Something that always uh, struck me as amazing about Link is just how um, stripped down he is, um, how unremarkable he is in terms of, well, what he looks like, what his weapons are, etc. Uh, he exists in a world where we have beings made out of stone, we have dragons, we have giant pig-like monsters, we have moblins, we have all these incredible things, but ultimately they all fall before one man who has a sword and shield and a couple other kind of generic infantry weapons. True, in some games Link can use magic, um, but generally speaking the magic doesn't come from him. The magic comes from things he obtains, be it the masks, be it the uh, magical spells the goddesses left behind in Ocarina of Time, um, etc. Uh, even the Master Sword is, is very ordinary. It's literally just a masterwork sword, if you will, um, that can pierce through Ganon's... Um, uh, I, sorry for using a D&D term, but damage reduction. Uh, Ganon cannot be hurt by traditional weapons because he's he's basically a demon, but the Master Sword can hurt him. Even so, Link has to use it in a conventional way. It's not like he could just point it at him and fire like a, a, a pillar of light and, exter and eliminate Ganon. No, he has to fight him. Indeed, he has to fight all of the, um, the various bosses in the Zelda games, which are the size of, of buildings and sometimes of mountains, uh, with just a sword, his shield, and his, his wits. And I think that's really kind of the interesting thing about Link, is that he manages to win despite all these incredible odds against him. And in this, I kind of see something of um, Christ, um, strangely enough. Uh, something of Christ, something of um, the Christian view of good versus evil. I don't know how predominantly Christianity featured in the uh, Zelda games and their creation. Um, it's certainly possible because we do have the tri we do have like a triune. Well, we have three goddesses. Um, we we do have Link is very obviously a knight, and Hyrule very obviously resembles medieval Europe. But it it always kind of um, there's a scene in Revelation that reminds me of Link, um, where we see Jesus. And he is in the form of a lamb with seven eyes and seven horns. And you have this little lamb that appears to have been slain. And yet contained within this, this tiny creature that's weak and pathetic and is sliced open. There is more power than in the rest of the universe. It's a being that with a bat of his eyelashes can ma make and remake um, all time. And that kind of to some extent reminds me of Link. Because Link is capable of defeating Deeble, of defeating dragons, is capable of fighting off armies by himself just through his strength of will alone and just through his courage. And that's really, to me, kind of symbolic of how life is. Um, I tend to think the strongest force in the universe is will. Um, I don't really... It's kind of like that um, scene in, in Conan the Barbarian where uh, Falsadun uh, manages to get a woman to jump to her death. And he goes, that is strength. Um, the ab ability to project my will and to get someone else to, to kill themselves. Human will is ultimately stronger than steel. It's stronger than any sort of um, specialized weapon or massive form, etc. Because so long as, as the will exists, I, I don't think you can be defeated. I mean, you could die, but you, you can't be defeated. And this is kind of like when we're dealing with stuff like ISIS, this is why I have a bit of respect for them, uh, as evil as they are. Because they are, in, in many ways, fighting an uphill battle. Um, but they willingly go into battle knowing that they're going to die. Indeed... Um, wishing for their own deaths so that they may serve more. Um, their will to win is so over endurance and their ability to endure hardship and face their death head on is so strong. 
it crushes the will of, of people around them. And we, we see this time and again throughout history of, of small countries that don't give up, that just continue fighting no matter what and win in the end. Um, when Rome was facing down Hannibal, uh, Hannibal succeeded in defeating them three times at Cannae, the River Trebia, and Lake Trasimene, in which they he destroyed three full Roman field armies within the space of two years. But Rome held on and they didn't surrender even when everything seemed lost. And to me, that's really the essence of Link. His will to combat evil is so strong, he continues to come back time and time again. Each time Ganon comes back, he comes back to stop him. It really kind of is kind of reflective, and I'm thinking of this because I was reading a book about, um, among other things, exorcisms. You have demons. Demons are these, these immensely powerful creatures. They can set things on fire. They can move things with their will. There are these great horned beasts as tall as mountains or however you want to envision them. You have the red dragon in Revelations, the great red dragon that strides across the earth, crushing everything in his path. And yet they can be defeated simply by calling on God's name. They can be defeated simply by standing up to them. Because for all their majestic power, they lack kind of just, they lack a strong will. And to some extent, that's kind of um, the thing with Ganondorf. Well, because I, I suppose in a sense he does have a strong will, so strong that he doesn't die and he just keeps coming back over and over and over again. But at the same time, he just his will isn't as strong as Link's. And that's why he will always lose. He puts too much faith in his plans. He puts too much faith in his minions, in his his machines, his designs, his plots. But he doesn't, he doesn't put enough faith in himself and in his ability to win. He's just wrought by arrogance, wrought by, by seeking other things. And I think that's kind of an interesting thing. In most of the games, Ganondorf tends to seek other things, be it the power of the Triforce, be it um, the power of Twilight. He relies on his followers. Um, I forget what the wizard who's a Sheikah is named. Garaman, Gurahim, uh, I forget one or whatever his name is. He relies on him. He relies on that um that guy from Skyward Sword, the guy who's like the the physical manifestation of his sword. He relies on that bird thing. He relies on um who is it? Zant. He relies on all these minions to resurrect him to sustain him. But ultimately, he just, I think he fundamentally lacks that, that belief in himself. He has the will to power, but he hasn't gone to the next step. Because there's a step beyond the will to power. Um, all men desire power, but at the same time, all men must die. And all my, men must serve. And what's even greater than having the absolute will to power and the absolute will to sustain yourself... And to become greater than what you are and to continue to live at all costs is the is the ability to face death head on to sacrifice yourself for someone else because that is in doing that you you are overcoming your highest desire as, as a human you are truly mastering yourself every impulse in your body screams at you to take every impulse screams at you to live and yet Link willingly faces his death. He willingly serves others. He willingly subordinates his immense powers and abilities to something greater than himself. And that's why Ganondorf can never win. Because he, he, he doesn't have anything but himself. And truthfully, I don't even know if he really believes in himself. He believes in his power. He believes in his, as I said, his machines, his minions, his Triforce, etc., he doesn't believe in himself, though, and he doesn't believe in a greater cause. It's just all about taking things for himself. The will to power is triumphed by the will to serve. And that, that is to serve from a position of self-mastery. That's not to be a pleb. That's not to be to serve out of fear, but to realize, fully actualize yourself and your greatness 
and then to take a cause that is eternal, that is infinite, etc., and to devote yourself to that, to become something greater than a man. Ganondorf can't become greater than a man. Zelda even remarks in Ocarina of Time, Ganondorf, silly man, to think that he could control the power of the gods. Because that's what he believes. He is arrogant. He is power-seeking. He's obsessed with it. But overall, it ultimately fails him. Link is absolutely steadfast in his opposition to evil. His hatred of cruelty. His willingness to help anyone, be it one person or a thousand. Be it just to make a little child smile or to save the world. He's absolutely devoted to that, to fulfilling the will of goddesses. And in his transcendent, trans-generational um, love for Zelda, um, his other half, as you will, the other half of his soul, his love for her, his subordination to the will of the goddesses, and his belief in something greater than himself is what gives him the strength to fight on. It's something Ganondorf can never understand, much as, as the devil can under, never understand uh, Christ's love and, and God's love. And because of that, Ganondorf will never be able to win, and Link will always defeat him. And this is a battle that will be continued throughout time, much as the real-life battle between the devil and God will be continued until the last day. That would be interesting, actually, in the Zelda franchise, if, if they decided to end it and they had a last day. Or, I don't know, the goddesses return and destroy Ganon forever. Perhaps that will happen, but until it does, Link will always be there. Just as we will always be there to hold back the night. So long as, as but one person remains who believes in higher ideals, there will still always be that one candle in the darkness. And one candle can, can illuminate the entirety of the night. This is Argon Templar, signing out.